Well, hello, authors. I'm Carrie Flanagan with Crave Books, and I'm excited to be here today with Mark Leslie Lefebvre, who is the Director of Business Development with Draft to Digital, and he is also an indie author with probably a gazillion, I would say, books out there. Just under. <laughs> okay, just under a gazillion. Awesome. Yeah. And he's just an all-around great guy. Um, and he's going to talk with us today about what it means to be a wide author. So Mark, can you tell them a little bit about who you are and then we'll dive into this topic of being wide. Yeah, thanks, Carrie, and great to chat with you. So being a wide author, in, in my mind, goes beyond the limited discussion of just Amazon exclusivity versus the other four major retailers. <laughs> it is being uh, published wide, thinking outside the publishing spheres of only indie publishing or only traditional publishing. It means embracing multiple formats. It means selling direct, whether it's at in-person events or through your own online store. And, and, and it also includes connecting with your readers and when you're sharing your book, not just sharing your book to the world's largest bookstore, but sharing your book using universal book links and, and book links that not only take into account uh, geo territories, because not everyone's in the US or the UK or whatever, they're in, in all kinds of other countries uh, around the world. But also there, there may be certain countries that don't have particular retailers. And so you want to give your uh, consumers, your readers, your customers, your patrons, your community, you want to give them choice as to where they find you. And that also includes, of course, libraries. It's not just the retail markets. So can you go a little bit, tell a little bit more about libraries? I think there's this um, misconception that if we go to libraries, because the readers get the book for free, that we as authors don't get paid for yeah. that. No, that's a great question. Now, I remember doing an interview uh, for Draft to Digital and one for my own Stark Reflections podcast years ago with the Panorama Project, uh, which was done at the University of Portland. And they did a study that showed that people who, actually, ironically, library patrons and pirates actually cause more sales of books. <laughs> they actually I... cause more people to buy books. So... Here's the thing: not everybody can afford uh, to purchase books, and 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 even even ebooks can can be expensive, particularly if you're an avid reader. But one of the most beautiful things about libraries, and and many of us discovered them when we were younger, is that you can have access to so many amazing free re resources in your community. You can have access to books and magazines and all kinds of other materials that are just you know uh, maybe cost prohibitive to own yourself, and so. A lot of library readers, particularly the voracious readers, are going to talk about your books. They're going to recommend them to book clubs. They're going to tell their friends. And those friends may be the ones who buy the books on other platforms. So you do make money when you sell the book to a library, but you also are discoverable for free. And, and there's less of a risk for somebody to be willing to pick up your book. And that could be the ebook, it could be the audiobook, it could be the print book, whatever it is. Now, in other countries other than the US, and this is also thinking wide, if you're an author who's listening to this from outside the US, if you're in Canada, like I am, for example, or one of 36 other countries around the world, there may even be a public lending right program where actually I get a check from the um, Canada Council for the Arts via the Public Lending Rights Canada program for my books being in libraries, which which actually that's a pretty sizable four-figure check that I get every year. So again, library, uh, being present in a library isn't just about money, it's about discoverability, but it can be about money and discoverability too. Excellent. And um, for people who still may be thinking, well, why shouldn't I just be on the largest bookstore and exclusive with right. them. I mean, what what are the reasons? Give me a couple of reasons why people should consider going well, wide. I'm, I'm one of the reasons. If your book is only available uh, through Kindle Unlimited or, or, or on Amazon, I'm not going to read it. Why? Not because I have anything against Amazon. I own a Kobo. I live in Canada. I purchase my eBooks on, on Kobo. So I'm never going to be able to buy your book if it's not available on Kobo. And so there are customers who are Apple fans. They're an Apple household. Everything has to do with Apple, every, every device they own. They're only going to purchase from the Apple store. They're only going to purchase from the Nook store because they're a Barnes & Noble fan and have always been, or Google or Smashwords or wherever the case may be. Never mind the fact that there are dozens and dozens of countries around the world 
then Amazon's not even available. So 100% chance you're never going to sell to people in those countries. So that's part of the reason. And then the other thing, of course, is when you are publishing your books, why? That means your book is discoverable, not only on a single retailer, but on whatever platform that they choose. And again, like we talked about libraries, that means that they can walk into, uh, you can walk into any library and you can request my books. And most of my books are available in print, audio, and ebook. And you can get them in any of those formats. Uh, now, some of my traditionally published books are not yet in audio. That's not my <laughs> fault. But, the, <laughs> but the, the reality is you can virtually go to almost any library in the world and request my books. And that means if somebody is interested, they hear me talking on a podcast or radio program or wherever it is, they see my like, TikTok or whatever, they, they can go and find it at a library or they can go to their favorite retailer and chances are it's going to be listed there because I'm not excluding myself. I'm not immediately excluding myself from the possibility of selling anywhere else. Right. And for, I'm just playing the opposite side here. I'm a wide author as well. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm behind this already. But um, if somebody is in KU, they're exclusive. So they have to wait out there 90 days. Yeah. And it can be a little scary. It can be. Because yeah. Sometimes sales will drop initially. So yeah. when we're looking at this, what tips do you have for people coming out of exclusivity into wide and right. how can they be successful there? No, that's a great, that's a great question, Carrie, because it is, it is kind of scary because I mean, Amazon's a huge place and there are authors who are making really good money from mm -hmm. Kindle Unlimited. So here's a, a couple strategies to consider. Maybe you have more than one book or more than one series. Don't take them all out at once. Uh, do it cautiously. You don't just jump in head first into uncharted waters where you don't know how deep the water is. You walk in carefully <laughs> and slowly so you don't hurt yourself. It, and it can be cool. It can be a shock uh, when suddenly a lot of your revenue is coming from Kindle Unlimited page reads. So you're getting uh, income from different sources. And it takes, it takes upwards of nine months or more to start building your, you know, your platform uh, on the other, on the other uh, retailers. And, and so starting cautiously with a plan, thinking long-term, not, it's not just a 30 day or 60 day or even a 90 day, which is the tour of duty you have to do in Kendall Unlimited. It's 90 day tour of duties, yeah, but thinking about much, much longer than that, because one of the challenges is every time you take a book down from those other retailers, you reset your algorithms, you reset your uh, trending, your ranking, your temperature uh, is what Kobo calls it. It gets reset to zero. And then when you start again, you're starting from scratch again. So it's kind of like, oh my God, I got to go all the way back to the, the start line. And now I have to run this marathon again from the beginning, not from just realizing that it's a long, slow burn. That's one of the other important things. The other thing that authors don't remember when they're publishing wide is that Amazon is pretty much algorithmic based. And that can work really well in your favor, particularly if you've invested a heck of a lot of time, energy, and money in Amazon ads. Yeah, it can work against you in very dramatically horrible ways. By if the wrong, if if, if even if you sell a lot, but the wrong people buy your books, uh, the algorithms are showing your your books to the wrong readers, which could lead to one star reviews and all kinds of other things. Never mind the incidental things that we don't know what happens where suddenly your sales just drop for no reason and you can't tell. It's usually some some weird algorithm that rhythmic thing happened. But where Amazon and even Google Play is, is a little bit more algorithm based. So it's based on keywords and things like that. The other major retailers, Apple, Barnes and Noble, Nook, and Kobo are all run by human merchandisers. And it's a different aspect. This is more about relationships. This is more about not who has a thousand dollars a day to to put into an Amazon ad that's going to beat your five dollars a day, you know, on the on the same keywords that you're bidding for, but it's about did a human actually see this book and decide to feature it in the front window, and that's a completely different way of playing mm -hmm. this game than many of us are, are taught because we cut our chops off and on Amazon and then forget that the other retailers, yes, they have algorithms. And algorithms are very important, but they also have a lot of humans. So, so running promotions through various sites that allow you to send links out to various retailers is critical because it's not all about just a built-in uh, 
you know, slot machine like uh, Amazon ads that is is only feeding one retailer. But this is an opportunity to get some action and some eyeballs on your books at various other retailers. Several of the retailers, if you're publishing direct, have promotional uh, opportunities, promotional tools, marketing uh, tools. Some of the distributors, draft to digital for example, offers promotions with several of the retail partners. So trying to remember that there's other ways to promote your books other than just an Amazon ad to a single platform. That's really, really critical. And then the last thing I want to mention is when you're thinking about those things on your own website, in your social media, not just sharing a link to your book on Amazon, but sharing a link to your book on your own website, if your own website has links to all the platforms. And there are multiple tools out there that you can use for free or paid services. So books to read.com for a universal book link. And that's run by draft to digital and it's free. There's a companies like book linker and other companies out there that allow you the opportunity to have geo targeted uh, links to all the various retailers and platforms. And so making it as easy as possible. I use books to read on my own website because I don't want to have to have 89 different logos of all the different right. platforms that my <laughs> books are on. I just want to use books to read, you know, click here to buy it direct from the author and click here uh, uh, right. to get it at any any popular retailer uh, around the world. And and that's the great thing is that there are, you know, um, retailers in other countries that aren't available in North America that you can find in Australia, in in Italy, in France, in Germany, et cetera, et cetera. So they're not just limited to what we know here in North America. Mm -hmm. Great tips. I think that will really help people understand that they can succeed if they have their books in these other platforms. Um, and I'll just do a plug for Crave Books because we do allow authors to put all the wide links in. So we have boxes for Kobo and Apple and even one that's direct. Um, so if somebody wants to go direct to their website. So doing yeah. promotions through Crave Books. Uh, but but I, can I, if I can add on to that, Carrie, sure. uh, one of the things I love about Crave Books is when I'm going to look at promotions, I'm running promotions right now, and we're talking in February 2024, I'm running promotions all month. And all I had to do was log into Crave Books, and I found eight different platforms in a single transaction, I could go pick the platform to see that it matched, you know, filter by genre, category, etc, price free or, or, or lower price point, put them all in the shopping cart, pick the days, make sure my links are all there, push a button. And in a single transaction, I've got eight different promotion sites booked, which saves me a lot of time. Absolutely. And you're getting it out wide as well. Um, <laughs> oh, I totally just lost. I had a last question here. And um, oh, so once again, somebody's come out of KU and they have a newsletter. So, you know, making sure this is, you know, they need to make sure that they're putting those wide links in there. And I just have to say it in my newsletter, what I do as a way to help me see where my readers are coming from is I don't do just the universal book link. I do links to every platform right. because it allows me to see and it reaffirms for me, oh, look, I have Kobo readers. I have Apple readers and even right. Smashword readers. I've just started adding those yeah. and it's super helpful for me to see. Yeah, that can help you because if you're doing a promotion specifically on Kobo and you know they're a Kobo reader, you may just want to send it to them and not annoy the people who aren't Kobo <laughs> readers. Um, <laughs> I think I think that's a really important uh, aspect. Yes. Well, any final words you want to leave people with in terms of being a wide author? Yeah. So the other thing, uh, and you you made me think of this when you're talking about you know coming out of Kindle Unlimited. So what do I do if I've come out of Kindle Unlimited and my I've trained my readers to think they can get my books for free? They're not. They're paying a corporation a monthly fee to read your books for free. But that's the the thought <laughs> is that you're reading for free. The two big, gigantic, amazing solutions for those kinds of readers. Well, there's three actually. The first is now your books would be available for free to readers through libraries around the world. So they don't have to pay a corporation. They can go and read your books for free. If they do like uh, pay programs where they can get books for a particular fee, they can join uh, Kobo, has Kobo Plus, which is like Kindle Unlimited. Uh, they have uh, better terms for ebooks and audiobooks. Uh, and and you can get access to them. And you don't have to be exclusive to Kobo or used to be known as Scribd, Everend. Uh, another a subscription platform that does not require exclusivity. So 
you can let your readers know you, you, you have three other options free at your library or these other two companies that don't force me to be exclusive to a single retailer in order to benefit from subscription programs. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing some tips today on how to sell your books wide all over the world. All Thanks right. so much, It's always Gary. great talking with you, Mark. Always um, great talking to you. you.